Digital Activism Fareshta Varuka, Afghanistan Fareshta Varuka is the founder and executive director of Code to Inspire, a coding school for girls in Afghanistan. Founded in 2015 with crowdfunded money and on a shoestring budget, this innovative project helps women and girls learn computer programming with the aim of tapping into commercial opportunities and fostering economic independence. Here is the lab. We have the students that they are working on their project. This is important work in Afghanistan, which 16 years after the fall of the Taliban still remains highly patriarchal and conservative. Only 21% of women receive secondary education, and around 60% of teenage girls are illiterate. Ordinary women find it difficult to socialize or travel, let alone work or use technology, whilst those with jobs all too often experience sexual harassment. But Faruka believes that with programming skills, an internet connection, and using Bitcoin for currency, Afghan women can not only create wealth, but challenge gender roles, gain social independence, and transform their society. I want to establish a safe and secure place that the women access the equal resources and then they can find job and employment online. I couldn't think of a better advocate and ambassador to forge the kinds of global relationships to really bring coding girls in Afghanistan into the public light. Many of Code to Inspire's pupils have gone from never touching a computer to designing web pages and reaching out to companies to offer their expertise. Habari RDC, Democratic Republic of Congo. Launched in 2016, Habari RDC is a collective of more than 100 young Congolese bloggers and activists. They use Facebook, Twitter and YouTube to give voice to the opinions of young people from all over the Democratic Republic of Congo. DRC has been wrapped with civil unrest and rebel uprisings for the last 20 years. Plagued by extreme poverty, corruption and violence, crackdowns on peaceful protests are common. Journalists face threats, violence, and even murder. In this context, discovering what is happening in the country is a major challenge. There are currently 5 million internet users in DRC, and this number is growing. Habari RDC's aim is to circumvent mainstream media and provide an alternative source of information. The media sont soit de l'opposition, soit de la majorité. Mais il n'y a pas un média qui parle de ce que vivent les jeunes, de ce que font les jeunes. Their site posts stories and cartoons about politics, but it also covers sexual harassment, the arts, and subjects as diverse as football, child exploitation, and the female orgasm. They've also been active offline. On World Peace Day last year, they ran activities themed around freedom of speech in multiple schools, taking their message to a new generation of future voters and potential readers. They're doing something that it's actually very hard to do, which is make sure that the future generation know what's happening in their own country, are willing to speak to each other about it, and be active politically. Habari RDC offers a distinctive collection of funny, angry, and modern Congolese voices who are demanding to be heard. Digital Rights Foundation, Pakistan. The Digital Rights Foundation blends research, advocacy, and training to promote women's rights in digital spaces. Pakistan is one of Asia's fastest growing internet markets, but women only make up around a quarter of the online population and routinely face intense harassment, including revenge porn, blackmail, stalking, and abuse. Women are using these spaces to exercise their freedom of expression and um, they are being threatened. Much of this goes unreported as most women feel they won't be taken seriously by a legal system which is ill-adapted to handle complaints or pursue prosecutions. This leads to many women withdrawing from online spaces. The internet is not always a very nice place to be a woman. One of the big challenges in Pakistan is the extent to which those, that online harassment often translates into offline harassment. You know, in this country, you don't know. Because they kill you for everything, every little thing. In late 2016, the Digital Rights Foundation took a major step to highlight and tackle this problem. They established a cyber harassment helpline, which has supported more than a thousand women in its first year of operation alone. DRF went on to publish their findings from the helpline, giving the first true picture of what Pakistanis are really experiencing online and a plan on how to move forward. Founder Nikad Dat says, impeccable privacy policies can encourage such a healthy and productive environment that would eventually help not only women, 
but the world at large. MediaCat, Spain. MediaCat is a Catalan website devoted to highlighting media freedom violations and investigating unreported or censored stories. Examples of their work include running an investigative journalism project, the yearbook on media blackouts, that covers issues often ignored by mainstream news. And in 2016, publishing a multimedia report on inmate suicides during solitary confinement, which resulted in the Catalan parliament setting up a commission to investigate the problem. A truly unique platform in Spain, MediaCat was a particularly significant player in the heightened atmosphere of 2017's disputed Catalan independence referendum. During this intense period of polarization, they were a valuable voice when issues of censorship and impartiality came under the spotlight. Their map on censorship became a way for journalists to report on abuses they'd personally suffered, cataloguing and listing restrictions on free speech, both publicly and in real time. Between September and November 2017, more than 125 possible restrictions on freedom of expression or information were documented. MediaCat has been able to ensure that many stories, which might not have surfaced during those difficult times, have become known to the population. In the organisation's own words, the initiative has spread the belief that free journalism is critical for a quality democracy and has helped many journalists to feel they are not alone. <laughs>